Coming to you live from the Cowboys headquarters in Frisco. Deep in the heart of Texas, it's the star at night. Wow, dramatic much? Why are you getting in the way of my intro? You mean our intro? We're your hosts. I'm Kelsey Charles. And I'm David Hellman. Okay, let's just start this show now. <laughs> well, this is awkward. It's uh, the star at night with David Hellman. She said it herself, Kelsey Charles. We're back in the studio. We got all the fancy gear. I got the IFB in and uh, no, no Kelsey to be seen. Uh, yeah, I know it's only week two, I guess. So throw it virtual, please, Caden. Uh, we're doing this again. We're going back to 2020, I guess. Kels, uh, to what do I owe the pleasure? I didn't know we were taking week two vacations. What's going on? Yeah, you know, preseason really wore me out having to do a whole lot of nothing. And so I just really felt like I had to get my mind right. And so here I am coming to you live from Kiowa Island. I'd like to tell you I'm sorry, but that'd be a lie. Uh, I would be absolutely furious if you apologize to me for doing nothing because that's my dream in life. I love the <laughs> continuation here. You know, the Cowboys go to the beach last week. Doesn't work out so well for them. So I hope your trip to the beach goes a little bit better. Look, I don't need to tell you about the details. Cowboys lose 31-29 in the season opener to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We've broken it all down by this point. But I do want your take. I haven't talked to you since the game. Give me your biggest impression from week one. Win, lose, good, bad, whatever. What do you got? All right, so humor me for a minute. I personally am here for the moral victory. Guys, it was no small task going into Tampa Bay and facing the defending Super Bowl champions with you know, all of their returning starters and also uh, Tom Brady. And I would have never thought that our quarterback sat out for most of the entire year last year. You've got the defense showing up and Micah Parsons did not look like a rookie. We won't even talk about special teams. We know that was an issue, but I really want to dive into Dak Prescott because the man was nothing short of impressive in this past game. I also, just looking at his stat line, I mean, you've got three touchdowns, 403 yards out of, you know, 58 attempts. But, hey, listen, 101.4 QB rating. And Tom Brady over here, 97. Does that mean, on paper, can I say that Dak Prescott is better than Tom Brady? I mean, I'm kidding. But, like, also – Comeback Player of the Year award. I feel like he has to be high on that list. Am I right? I mean, I, if you don't want to say it, I will. I thought Dak outplayed Brady. I know he lost, but that's okay. Things happen in football. Hey, I, You know, I get it. I'm a grump, and I understand why you think I wouldn't like the moral victory. I got something to say about that, and I'm going to get into it in the next segment without you. That's the price you pay for leaving me here by myself, I'm sorry to say. Oh, no. But I absolutely agree with you, Kels. I, you know, they lost, but guess what? There's 17 of these things. You're not going to win them all. If your quarterback plays like that, though, you are absolutely going to have a chance. I'm glad we're on the same page about that. We'll see how you feel about this next one that I do without you. <laughs> but until then, we will be right back after this. Cowboys Star at Night is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, the official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys, AT&T, and by Favor, the official on-demand food delivery partner of the Dallas Cowboys. This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. You're home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. All right, Dave. Last call. Can I get you anything? <sighs> yeah, Aaron. You can get me something. Give me some peace of mind about this football team, man. Because because I, I don't know how to feel. I've been grappling with this for the better part of a week at this point. And I... I get it, man. I know it, it's the NFL. It's win or go home. You play to win the game. Shout out Herm Edwards. Like I understand, but with everything the Cowboys have been through over the last 11 months, can't you take some excitement out of that? Can't you look at Dak Prescott standing in there against the blitz, ripping lasers to Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb, 
almost you know, 500 yards through the air, leading them down the field, going for the game-winning field goal. I, I know they didn't win. They didn't. But don't come at me with this no moral victories stuff because I watched a lot of bad football in 2020, and that wasn't bad football. That gives you hope. I'm asking people to look at the bigger picture and say they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Super Bowl champs, and they, they didn't quite get it. I get, I get it. They weren't quite there. But they got a hell of a quarterback, man. And they got a pretty nice looking squad. And I'm just not here. I'm not here for the doom and gloom. I'm not here for it. Not in week two, you know? I feel like I'm going crazy. You know, it's just kind of how it was with those Romo days, <laughs> though, too. Nope. Okay. okay. That's all the perspective I needed. We're not doing, we're not doing Romo right now. We're on to week two. We're on to the Chargers. We'll be right back with Daniel Jeremiah. This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. This segment is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, y'all, welcome back to the show. I got to say, I love how fortuitous this interview is. If you know me at all, gigantic draft nerd, draft coverage in the offseason. So not only do we get to nerd out on the draft right now, we get to preview the Cowboys Week 2 game against the Chargers as well. As well. We're going to do that with NFL Network's own Daniel Jeremiah, host of the Move the Sticks podcast, also radio for the LA Chargers. Like, this just works so beautifully. Daniel, thanks for being on with us, man. I appreciate you guys having me. I, I don't know if the NFL could get off to a better start I mean, from the Cowboy game with the Bucks, how fun that was, all the way to the Monday night game. It was awesome. Absolutely agree. I well, just love. Well, I want to jump right in. <laughs> Go ahead. I just, I just love that we got West Coast, East Coast, and then I'm in the middle in Dallas. Yeah. Like, we're nationwide on the star at night. So, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead, Kels. No, it's all good. I'm just excited to talk about it because you made some really, really interesting comparisons last year, Daniel, and I want to get your thoughts already. Mm -hmm. I know – all of you are just already grading all of these rookies. And so Micah Parsons, obviously ours, you made a comparison to him as a, a pre injury Jalen Smith. He had a pretty good start this first game. Definitely in my opinion, didn't look like a rookie. So mm -hmm. I want to dive in and get your analysis on how he is playing out for this Cowboys defense. Well, he's just, you know, he's a versatile chess piece. When you talk about comparisons, doing these Charger games, I've seen it when Derwin James has been healthy and on the field. Literally week to week, what he does changes. And it's such flexibility for your play caller on the defensive side. Some weeks you're going to use him to rush. Other weeks you're going to use him to cover and blanket tight ends. You can play Derwin James high. I mean, you can move Parsons all over the place as well. So it's where the NFL is. It's positionless football. That's where everything's going. And he is a he is a wonderful young talent for the Cowboys. Which it's way too early. We're not playing the what if game. Not ready to do that yet. Yeah. But you can't help but notice the guy that probably would have been a Cowboy if it hadn't been Micah Parsons is going to be <laughs> playing for the LA Chargers. Rashawn Slater. Not so much positionless football with this guy. He was a rock at left tackle against Washington on Sunday. Yeah. I know you were very impressed. Just give us a little bit more insight into what you've seen from him so far. Yeah, I, as you guys know, he's my favorite offensive lineman coming into the draft process. And he just he doesn't have negative plays. He's got great balance. He's always on his feet. In that game and just being there in the stadium, and you guys see that Washington front, how talented they are. It wasn't just like washing the guy past the quarterback or, you know, giving ground and anchoring down late. It was over. Like, he was Chase Young. It was stymied at the line of scrimmage, and it was over. So much so that they just flipped him over to the other side and said, we're wasting him over there, over Slater. And then he took care of Montez Sweat, who's a big-time dude. So, yeah, he was uh, as good as you could ever imagine for a rookie in his first start. 
So I want to build on that a little bit more because, you know, he is so impressive. And this Cowboys defense has historically had some struggles. So you having all the insight into the Chargers, I want to break down their offense a little bit more and what this defense has to face. So, you know, you made quite the claim with the improvement at the O-line with Slater that you think Herbert has a shot at the MVP candidacy. So I want to touch on that for a minute, get your thoughts there. And then also, what about this this new and improved Cowboys linebacker core and how are they going to you know attack Eckler? And, and then again, Randy Gregory potentially being out, that's a Slater potential matchup and now could be a, a mismatch. I mean, mismatch potentially already because you just said facing a guy like Chase Young and shutting him down is no small feat. So what does this Cowboys defense have to prepare for? Yeah, first of all, so everybody makes their – predictions in the off season, right? You know, who's going to be the MVP, who's going to be the offensive player of the year, rookie of the year, all that stuff. See, I think that's way premature before the season starts. I just like to watch one game. That's like watching a preview to a movie and writing a review um, in the newspaper, right? We used to do that, right? You'd watch movies and write the review in the newspaper. Young people have no idea what we're talking about. Uh, but uh, that's what I did. I watched one week and I'm like, okay, I saw Herbert in college with a good offensive line, no receivers vault himself into a top 10 pick. I saw him as a rookie in the NFL with receivers and no offensive line win rookie of the year. And now I look at four new starters on an offensive line for the Chargers who played great against a really good front in Washington. And I'm like, he's got receivers. He's got an offensive line. I, mean, I don't know. You know, it's it's crazy to say this guy is a legit MVP candidate, but we'll see how it all goes in this game and this matchup. I think it kind of lends itself to a little bit of a shootout. I mean, I, I think the Cowboys defensively we're going to struggle a little bit because I, I think the Chargers will be able to protect and they'll be able to take some shots down the field like we saw Tampa do. And then on the other side, I mean, how can you not come away impressed with what you saw, what the Cowboys did with Dak? Just throwing it all over the place. And as good as Washington's defensive front was, they didn't have the offensive firepower that the Cowboys present. So the Chargers and, and Asante Samuel Jr. in his first start out of Florida State played great. Derwin was back there and he looked like himself. But this is a whole new challenge with this receiving core in this passing game with the Cowboys. Which I absolutely agree with that. But given what the Cowboys have been through with their own offensive line, the storyline yeah. here until further notice is that Lyle Collins isn't available. And guess what, Terrence Steele? You got a guy by the name of Joey Bosa to Joey deal with Bosa. in your first game <laughs> up. So, I mean, we know Joey Bosa is a good player. But I am curious. You know, it's, it's a little bit of a new look for them as well. You know, Melvin Ingram was there for so long. He's not there anymore. We know you got to be worried about Bosa, but in general, what do you think of this Chargers front? Uh, you know, obviously only one game, but it's better than nothing, right? Yeah, it's it's a good group, and the the linebacker core is outstanding. And you guys have seen what linebacker play can do for the Cowboys, but the Chargers have so much speed at that second level. Kenneth Murray in year two, and led the team in tackles last year, but this year they're letting them really hunt and play downhill. They're blitzing him a lot more. He was really impactful in that first game against Washington. Then you've got Derwin James, who we mentioned. You've got Bosa. They've got guys at all three levels of that defense. And I I know uh, early in the week, I like to go back and watch a lot of the rookies and how they played. And so I'll go to this, you know, PFF Ultimate. I can click on and sort the plays, and then I can watch everything. Samuel Cosme's grade, I think, in pass pro was like a 10, a 10 out of 100, I think, Ooh. going up against Bosa in that first Ooh. game. So... He's he gets under he gets overlooked. His brother gets even more attention than he does. But Joey's a freak. I'm really hoping Terrence Steele can do better than 10 out of 100. That's a little bit discouraging. <laughs> but hey, well, hey, Daniel, we appreciate the preview, man. I'm I'm personally so excited to get out there and check out SoFi. So thank you for the time, and we'll see you this weekend, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I tell you what, this was a lot of fun being in three different states when we did this. I know, right? Uh, sometime in the future, we'll have to all get together. Absolutely, for sure. Thank you so much, <laughs> Daniel. And uh, Kelsey and I will be right back after this. This segment is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys. We love a good game here at the Star at Night. And this one, I got to give a shout out to our producer, Caden. It really speaks to my heart. The side that I can't show on television because of who I am as a person. We're going to call it what the bleep, for lack of a better word. Kels, that, that kind of sounds like us, right? Yeah, minus the bleep. But we're going to bleep things out well, for you guys here. This is a family-friendly show. Come find us at the bar if you want 
the whole spiel. But Kels, it's very straightforward. I'm going to walk you through it. We pulled some tweets from, from yours truly and a friend of the show, Rob Phillips. Cowboys tweets. Lovely. Really run-of-the-mill stuff, but as you are aware, as somebody who uses Twitter a lot, gets quite a reaction out of people. So we're going to try to guess what the fans are probably upset about, if I had to guess, in this segment. Again, what the bleep. Let's get to it. All right. Terrifying. So, obviously, we all know Lyle Collins is going to miss this game against the L.A. Chargers. Who do you want to see playing right tackle? Terrence Steele or Ty Insecki? Here are your answers from C.J. Lee. Bring someone out of retirement to play it. Both of them are... Kels, what do you got? Because I, 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 you, you know that's what they said. That's, you're go, you're you going C? Yes. No, I'm going B just because Cheeks is hilarious. Like, if you're going to be a jerk... <laughs> At least be a funny jerk. So I'm going cheeks. Show me the answer. <laughs> hey! I pro hey, they don't show us. They don't show us this stuff. Which okay, let's let's calm down. Let let Terrence Steele play a game. Like I'm not condoning this behavior. This is premature. He's had a whole year to grow and mature and be a better player. That's rude. But again, if you're going to be an ass, at least say Cheeks, because it is funnier. <laughs> All right, I'm scared for the next one. All right, so again, so the, the hits keep coming. Uh, you know, Randy Gregory going on the COVID list. We don't know if he'll be available for this game or not, which Wiki8503 seems to understand the plight. He says, sometimes I feel like rooting for this team carries some sort of... A, monkey's paw, B, cosmic punishment, C, voodoo magic. I don't know. What do you got, Kels? I feel like you're going to go with C just because of your New Orleans roots. I'm going to go with B because I have a, a pretty good pulse on Cowboys fans, and I feel like they're constantly just in pain. <laughs> I don't trust the average fan to get what a monkey's paw is, so I'm also going B, cosmic punishment. <laughs> yes! Yes! Yeah. God, it's it's week two. Do people realize that it's week two? Like this, we're it's okay, it's everybody. So like the sky's not falling. I have a feeling this is going to be a theme. To throw us to the last one, maybe we can cheer some people up with this last one. I kind of doubt it. Oh yeah, this is my yeah, tweet. No. This is my tweet about Chauncey Golston and Malik Hooker maybe coming back this week. It says, will they be blank anytime soon? A winning, B getting sacked, C releasing brutal. Anthony Brown. Like. What does this even have to do with Anthony Brown? I that's the an I know that's I know that's the answer. It has to be the answer. It's because the, everybody hates it. Just, it like, get, hey, Dodge Cow Lake. Shame. We're talking about say like Anthony Brown was fine. He was fine. Okay, I know he gave up the touchdown. He was supposed to have safety help. It's Tom Brady, by the way. It's Antonio Brown, by the way. Uh, I mean, if you can't handle a Week One loss to the champs, I weep for what we're in for. So hopefully. <laughs> They can get a win in L.A. because, yeesh, I don't love the attitudes out there so far. Maybe Honestly, next. Honestly, I'm here for it. <laughs> of course you are. But you're not. You're not here for this. So hopefully oh. the next time we do an episode of the show, you'll be in studio with me. Uh, yeah. We're going to be talking about L.A. against Dallas in further detail. Until then, that was a depressing, albeit fun, edition of What the Bleep. Hopefully playing that after a win next time. When we come back, we will tell you who to be rooting for in Thursday's tilt between New York and Washington. Stay with us. Cowboys Star at Night was brought to you by... Academy Sports and Outdoors, the official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys. AT&T. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. My hard and fast rule is not to overreact to anything that happens in week one. Crazy stuff happens. It's a 18 week season, 17 games. No need to overreact. Having said all of that, the Giants getting blown out by the Denver Broncos completely confirms my priors that they're not any good, Kelsey. I just don't think Daniel Jones is it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm out of line. That's how I feel. 
I just honestly, unfortunately agree, um, which is why the upcoming Washington and New York game is very important to me because while I don't think he's the answer, I need him to be come game day because um, you know who actually has a competent football team? Washington. And even though they lost Ryan Fitzy, well, um, I'm still scared, guys. I'm still scared because Taylor Heineke, I don't even know how to say his name, y'all. Like, and that doesn't even matter. Heineke. Heineke. I was going to say Heineke, <laughs> but like I was afraid I was going to say Heineke. I, you know, whatever. Yeah, we don't like talk the beer. about those beers on it's this. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Either way, I'm going to go Team JG because I really need New York to beat the better team. Thank you. Goodbye. You took the words right out of my mouth, dude. Like, I'm just, I'm not afraid of the New York Giants. I don't, they can come back and make me eat my words if they want. I don't think anything of them. So if they can put Washington in an 0-2 hole, that would be absolutely amazing and a way better way to start week two than the Cowboys losing on Thursday like we saw last week. So, hey, Daniel Jones, pull this one out for me. We'll see how you do. Thanks so much for watching our show, you guys. Hey, we're trying to get you involved. We read your mean tweets this week. We're going to keep doing that. The Star at Night on Twitter, you can you know where to find me and Kelsey. We're on there entirely too much. We live there. Get involved. It's going to be a fun season. And, uh, you know, next time we do this, maybe I can get Kelsey to actually be in studio with me. What do you think, Kelsey? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> if you're not tired of the beach by then. Uh, yeah, we'll see you all next time. Don't worry about it. <laughs>